And the only way I could explain this feeling was literally like making love to life. I, I can't even. I've never felt anything in my life like it. It was a completely different feeling. This energy was just so amazing. <laughs> like the feeling was so amazing. It was so beautiful. It, it, it was just incredible. Hello, my loves, and welcome back to another episode. As you can see from the title, it's going to be a juicy one. My Kundalini awakening story was not something that I had planned. It It just happened. This was a spontaneous random thing that happened to me and actually just shook me up in so many ways that I can't even explain that well I will be explaining I will be trying to explain in the best way possible I'm gonna be creating a whole kundalini series based on my experiences personally for other people to hopefully help you through yours because I know the benefits it has from other people talking about their experiences and then when you're going through the same thing and you feel so alone because it's such a rare thing that happens I personally think that it's so nice to be able to speak to people or at least find people that resonate with what you have been through so this is going to be a whole series this is the first of many videos and episodes about kundalini when I first had my kundalini awakening I had it in the back of my mind that it was possibly kundalini but i wasn't really sure whether it definitely was and i just went down a deep deep rabbit hole on youtube specifically to find other people's experiences so i was searching my kundalini awakening my first kundalini awakening my kundalini awakening story i just needed to understand whether what i experienced was definitely kundalini and whether the symptoms and signs and all the, those kind of things were aligning to something that i went through and upon doing that, I was just certain. It was something that I didn't actually really know anything about prior to that. So this subject, the Kundalini, has been something that I've not been able to talk to a lot of people about. Because when I explain my story and what happened, I, and I'm saying this from experience because I also responded this way to a friend of mine when she told me about her Kundalini awakening story years ago and I didn't really understand what she was talking about I kind of I'm not even gonna lie when I say this I kind of thought she was talking a little bit crazy once it happened to me it made me realize that actually I feel really bad for even thinking that way and when I experienced it I understood everything that she meant from her story way back then so this isn't something for the people that are very um what's the word if you are a skeptic um, or if you just think that some spiritual stuff is very delulu, then this this episode isn't going to be for you. If you have felt that you have had a Kundalini awakening just recently or you are going through a Kundalini awakening or you went and had a Kundalini activation, then this is definitely going to be for you. I just feel like I would be doing a disservice if I didn't share this and I feel very comfortable and safe to be able to share this online. Isn't that funny? But I don't necessarily feel comfortable and safe talking about this to certain people that I know because I know that one, they're just probably not ready to hear it. Two, they probably think I'm actually crazy because some of the stuff I'm going to say is going to sound crazy. I'm not even going to deny it. I'm going to be putting my hands up and saying, yes, this is going to sound absolutely bizarre. Okay. So... <laughs> Just take what resonates and leave the rest behind. That's all I'm going to say. Just to begin, I want to touch on the build up to this happening. When I first moved to Glastonbury, and I don't condone what I'm about to say here, okay? I'm not saying what I was doing here was right. I'm not saying go out and do that because just don't. <laughs> this is just what happened to me. The year of me living in Glastonbury, when I was living there, I had a bit of a weird relationship with cannabis because prior to me moving there I hadn't really touched it for a really long time because I didn't have a very nice experience for quite a few years before that and it just put me off and then when I was living there I had this experience it was like an enlightening experience and so from that point on I started smoking it quite a lot but I was smoking it for more spiritual purposes I was just building a relationship with it and I was finding that I was getting so many realizations about life living in Glastonbury anyway is crazy in itself as you have so many activations when you live on that land because it's just 
on ley lines and it's the heart chakra of the world and you know what I mean if you go to Glastonbury you know what I'm saying but living there is just a whole different ball game and yeah I was just having so many realizations and activations and awakenings I remember in September 2022 it was the autumn equinox and I had a bufo ceremony planned I went and done this bufo it was absolutely amazing so much stuff released from me lots of emotion lots of deep rooted emotion released from my body and I remember the lady saying to me you will find that your life and your energy is going to start aligning more now you'll start realigning inside energetically and you'll notice it so just go easy on yourself okay cool so I walked away had some real deep process after that and January came around and I decided to create a space for myself I remember it was a Friday evening after work I set up this cute little space in my my flat because I was going to do Reiki on myself so I set the ceremony space up and I thought you know what I'm gonna make a joint and I'm gonna Reiki the joint I'm gonna have these intentions as I'm making it and I'm gonna set this intention and even when I'm smoking it I'm gonna smoke it with intention and think about what it is that I want to basically let go of there was things that I was noticing about myself at this point in time that I had a lot of cords old cords attached to me that were not serving me any good they were actually holding me back in life and I remember doing this meditation and seeing all the cords in my back and it was as if the cords were pulling me away from my future and they were keeping me locked locked in, locked in back there. So when I was doing this ceremony, it was to cut the cords and basically let go of all the those attachments, those cords that weren't serving me to let them all go so I could have space myself and I could start moving forward. So I go and smoke this joint. These intentions are in my mind. I come back to my mat and I sit down and before you start doing the Reiki on yourself, you call in the energy. So I'm sat there before I even start drawing the symbols. I call in the Reiki energy and I suddenly started to feel this energy in the root of my spine. And it felt instantly like this spiral of energy just coiling up my root and up into my womb. And it was moving so slowly. When this started happening, it was as if my my ego and my higher self was separated. And it was as if my higher self was here present, feeling the energy, and then my ego was behind me. And my ego was trying to <laughs> talk its way into like, what is going on? What's happening? Why are you feeling that? This is really strange. Like just all that that noise, that chatter in your mind, it was just there. It was just chattering away, trying to put me off of the the present moment of like what I was feeling. It was just like trying to logically figure out what was happening. But my higher self in the moment was sat there in that peaceful state, feeling this energy and recognizing that it was moving and it was started to move up started to move up my spine it started going up into my crown and it was just coiling itself all the way from my root all the way up to my my crown chakra and I kept hearing let go let go and it sounded like that let go let go as if spirit or my higher self was encouraging me to let go let go and although my intention going at that point was to let go of the cords what I realized in this moment is that I needed to let go myself I needed to let go and because I was fighting this urge to to surrender to this feeling that I was feeling in my body this spiraling this energetic spiral that was going from my root all the way up to my crown chakra I was kind of resisting it because this ego behind me this chatter was going what the, what the fuck like what's going on this is so weird why are you feeling this this is such a weird feeling that this feels really cool but what, what I don't really understand what's happening but I could just feel so much energy in my body surging literally through me and as soon as I started hearing the words let go let go I was like okay I just kind of like surrendered to it and as this was all happening this let go and this feeling I could feel my body was moving and it was moving in the direction of the energy so as it was spiraling round and up my body was spiraling round and up specifically my head was moving like this going round in circles but my body was still I could feel the energy coursing through me 
you know, as I started to surrender more to it, letting go more to it, my whole body started to move with the energy and it was coiling and spiraling and going up. And I could feel the energy literally bursting out of my crown chakra. And the only way I could explain this feeling was literally like making love to life. Like it was so orgasmic. I I can't even, I was literally verbally orgasming as this was happening, like verbally, like making orgasm sounds because that's what it felt like. It literally felt like I was making love to life. I've never felt anything in my life like it. You know, it's it wasn't the same as a as an orgasm that you have when you're having sex. It was it was a completely different feeling. This was so energetic. And the fact that, you know, nothing intimate was happening. I wasn't doing anything intimate to myself. I just this this energy was just so fucking amazing <laughs> like the fucking feeling was so amazing it was so beautiful it was so amazing the feeling I, I like it it was just incredible and that was just going through me and I was just allowing myself to flow with it but even still whilst this was all happening that ego was still sat there behind me going what the fuck are you doing why are you doing this look at yourself you look so weird look at what you're doing no one was there with me but because my body was moving and there was so much happening it was such a weird feeling because I felt honestly completely out of control of my body I felt like I wasn't even in control of myself that 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 was there was even though I was resisting what was happening I couldn't necessarily resist that because I think my whole body if I was going to resist that I think my whole body would have just started vibrating like energetically vibrating um and it just kept happening and kept going and it was just I it was I was in this bliss state of orgas orgasmic life force energy flowing through me for I don't even know how long but it just it was just going on and on and on and on and on and I was just in this spiral and it was like I was connected to earth but I was also connected to the sky and it, just my whole every single chakra in my body was just completely cleared out completely cleansed everything had just gone poof, out of my crown and it was the most fucking incredible experience, like the most incredible feeling. Once that continued to go and flow, the voice let go, let go stopped because I realized as this was all happening that I needed to let go. I needed to like fully surrender to life, fully let go myself first before I could let go of anything else. I needed to just completely let go. Like it was as if I was shown what it feels like to fully let go. And... I remember once the energy started coming down and I was breathing, I was really deeply breathing and I just had to take a moment to really sit with myself and just be with that energy because I was kind of very confused, to be honest. I was quite just not really sure what happened because again, I hadn't even called the symbols in yet. I just called in the energy and then I decided to do Reiki on myself after that and I've never felt Reiki like this in my life. I could feel every single bit of energy that was coming out of my hands even down to me moving my hands in circular motions side by side on my face I could feel it was as if I had two giant balls in my hand and someone had these massage balls and they were massaging your back in circular motions that's what it felt like with my energy it felt like my energy was being massaged and cleansed and cleared and Oh, it's just the most beautiful personal Reiki session I've ever done on myself. The whole ceremony was just absolutely amazing. That is literally the first of many different Kundalini awakenings that I'd had. And that happened over and over and over again. And it always happened spontaneously. And I can't remember how many times specifically, but I know it was over five times that I'd had kundalini awakening just like randomly happen. It seemed to be that it would happen a lot every time I smoked cannabis. And it was so strange because after this happened, anytime I smoked cannabis after this, my sensitivity levels were so fucking high that I couldn't smoke the level that I could before. I would have like one or two puffs and I was way too high to even like have any more. Whereas before I could smoke like a mini joint everyone here that knows what it's like to smoke cannabis usually your tolerance builds right over time 
Mine had built over time, but it was as if this energy knocked me right back to day one of ever trying it. So yeah, after that, I was really sensitive to that medicine and it made me realize that I needed to stop smoking it because it was making me feel way too much and I was so sensitive and it kept giving me these random spontaneous activations that I would start feeling this energy coursing through me and just suddenly start having this awakening and I didn't ever want it to happen when I was around people because it's just the way your body moves it doesn't look normal unless you're in a place like Glastonbury people wouldn't probably care they saw you convulsing in a way that would kind of seem normal there I remember I was up at tour one time I'd just come on my period and I was in so much pain a couple of my friends were inside tour drumming and nobody else was there it was just us lot I sat outside and I was just really really there with my womb and I felt very very anchored into the earth because my womb just felt so heavy I started feeling this kundalini energy circulating in my root chakra again and then moving up my body again and I was having to resist it because all my friends that were in the tour drumming the drumming was just bringing it up and out of me as well and I could see myself I could visually see myself in the middle of tour dancing in a spiral and I just I just I had to like really breathe and hold it in and that was when I was like really trying to resist it it's, it's probably not a good thing to resist it but this was just one other time that I had a, an activation where I could really really was resisting it I told the guys I was like look I need to go and I remember walking down from tour, getting in my car, driving back to my flat. I got into my flat and as soon as I walked through that front door, the heat that just overtook me, I suddenly just felt completely boiling hot. I felt like I needed to just take all my clothes off because I was like about to faint. My body temperature just skyrocketed. And I remember just sitting down on my bed. I thought to myself at this point, if I don't get my clothes off, I'm going to vomit all over myself. I'm going to vomit all over my bedroom, all over my bed. I felt really dizzy and very, very lightheaded and just really, really discombobulated. I had to just lie down for a minute. And then anytime I felt like I was, okay, right, I can probably just get this jacket off now. I was taking a piece of clothing off really, really slowly, little bit by bit, because I couldn't sit up for long enough without feeling like I was either going to vomit or pass out. Just this energy that was coursing through me was just so so overwhelming eventually I managed to <laughs> I know this is like really provocative but this is just what happened um eventually I managed to lie on my bed naked I was in the position of a fetal a fetal I was in a fetus position on my bed and I was just laying there and I felt like I was in this womb the energy that was just rushing through my body was so overwhelming it made me feel really really hot really faint really dizzy my head felt like it was going to explode. I managed to get myself up and get myself some water and then just lay there. Once the feeling of dizziness, the faint feeling died down, I managed to stretch my body out. So I wasn't in the fetal position anymore. I was stretched out. I remember just lying straight. I was lying on my back. And again, this energy started flowing through me again but this time it wasn't the spiral it was more of a wave so it came from my root chakra again and it was waving all the way up my spine and up to my crown and out of my crown and this wave of energy again started feeling like I was making love to life again it just started happening but I think the reason why I was so overwhelmed and felt really sick is because that energy needed to come out of me when I was up at tour. I had to like keep it down because I knew I just needed to get home. This can happen to me at home. I'm in a safe space. No one's around me. I'm on my own. That's the best place for this to happen. So it was... I was just really like what is happening to me I remember the first time it happened again actually that was a bit further down the line but the first time it happened to me was at the end of Jan and then the beginning of February we were up north to surprise my auntie for her 50th party and we were staying in the Premier Inn I had my own room and where my auntie lives there's a lot of like industrial buildings just massive shops this time I was just sat on the bed and I felt like I could feel every single person that had been in that room my sensitivity levels to noise was just so much more heightened I could hear every single piece of electrical items in that room and it just felt so noisy I was just sitting there and I was just like oh my god this is so loud and it's so loud all I could hear was this really really loud buzz coming from the tv coming from the lights coming from the switches uh, it was just it was so much and the same type of kundalini awakening happened like the first time so it was the, started with the spiral from the root all the way up to my crown and I just had to ride it out basically making that love to life and you know I say it is like making love to life and it's very orgasmic that feeling that you get when you have a kundalini awakening can feel very addictive 
I can't lie to you because it's such a powerful experience that I feel that people end up chasing that feeling and people end up getting into places where you just want to feel that orgasmic explosion that happens in your body and out of your crown. I don't think that's necessarily benefiting us. It's a nice experience to have, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's benefiting us long term. I feel like you're just chasing another high. But I think the best thing for you to do is is basically integrate that explosion of energy but spread it across your whole life now going forward rather than like just having these big bursts of awakenings every now and then just why not allow that energy to flow through your body throughout the day throughout the next day and then the next day and the next day that you can have that energy in you but it's so much more leveled out the first time it ever happened to me I remember going to bed that night got up the next day and I had so much energy quite honestly I feel like I feel like the next day I just felt like unstoppable and I felt so powerful and really just like, oh my God, I feel amazing. I feel like I've got so much energy. I just feel really like in my power. I feel really in my power. Obviously, it was just an incredible feeling that I had in my body, but I think it was just the lingering energies of this awakening that had happened. And I remember thinking the next day, I just don't even know how I could look at life the same again. It just felt like it altered my brain chemistry. It felt like it it altered my nervous system. (laughs) The best way I could explain it is that it felt like it had realigned all my chakras, my energetic chakras and the energetic cord that runs through the middle of the body. But my physical body needed to catch up to that. So although I had been like realigned, readjusted, we're in alignment. My body had to catch up to that. It affected my body after that because of the amount of energy that ran through me and this realignment and this readjustment, the nervous system shake up, just shaking me back into better shape, basically better energetic shape. Everything felt different, everything. And I remember thinking about my close friends and thinking, oh my gosh, they're never going to understand me. They're not going to understand me now. They're never going to get this. How am I meant to explain this to people without this sounding completely crazy? First of all, what the fuck was that? (laughs) What the fuck? I remember reaching out to my Reiki teacher because she has had a Kundalini awakening. And I just remember thinking about her and thinking, I need to talk to her about this because she, she will help me understand this a little bit better. Thankfully, I was so lucky that I had someone in my life that had actually been, actually, I've got a couple of people in my life that this has actually happened to. So I was very, very lucky. But I understand that for some people when they have their kundalini awakenings it can be a very lonely place so I was very lucky to have some people in my life that I could reach out to and maybe just try and get a bit of understanding about what happened but deep down in my body I knew it was a kundalini awakening even though I didn't know what kundalini awakening really entailed or what what it really was I didn't get it I didn't understand it because personally I feel like the word kundalini gets thrown around in the spiritual community in a way that people don't necessarily understand what it is it's kind of this new age stamp that people can put on their experiences and their journeys to be like oh yeah I've had a kundalini awakening when it actually happens and it's not something that you even knew about or it's not something that you understood it's very fucking confusing. It's very fucking confusing. You think you're going crazy at one point. I did. I felt like I was going crazy at one point. There's some good things that happened and there's also some things that happened that wasn't comfortable after having this awakening because it literally alters your brain chemistry. Personally, that's what I felt, especially with the amount of energy that like burst through your brain and through your crown chakra. There's definitely something that's happening there to your nervous system, to your body, your energetic body. I remember just waking up the next day and just thinking, life is not going to be the same again. This has woke me up in a way that I can't explain. And I know that I'm not going to be able to explain this to everyone because not everyone's going to understand this. There's going to be people that are going to look at me and think, you are fucking crazy. You are delulu, you're delusional, what the fuck. And then there's people that are going to look at me and be like, I fucking get it. I've been there. I understand. That is exactly what I've just gone through. And that's why I'm doing this because I really want to support the people through it in a way that I needed. And that also helped support me. So there was this feeling afterwards of I'm going to be misunderstood. Knowing that I can't tell everyone about this, I can't talk much about this. 
to certain people that was very very present for me this fear of being misunderstood but knowing that that's what it's going to be and accepting the fact that you know yeah you might be misunderstood but it's okay and you know to be selective about who you're sharing your experiences with the last time I actually felt like I had this kundalini energy running through me was actually not that long ago it was probably maybe two and a half months ago and I just felt that this immense amount of energy running through my body and it felt like my body was vibrating and twitching massively and I couldn't really control it and I was trying to like breathe through it even though this was happening to me I felt like I couldn't say what was happening because it wasn't being received by the other person there's moments like that where you feel like you have to get a lock on the energy that's running through you and that is so uncomfortable because when that's happening it's so hard on the body your body's like basically wanting to shake this energy up and out but when you're trying to restrain that it's like holding a beach ball under the water you know like you're if you're trying to hold a beach ball under the water as soon as you let that go it's like it blows straight up that's what it feels like when you're trying to keep a hold of this energy and you're not letting it actually like flow through you it's a really interesting journey having this happen this episode was solely just based on my kundalini awakening experience but there's going to be plenty of other episodes coming up that i am going to be touching on the signs and symptoms the changes that happened to me after my kundalini awakening the dark side of it why i isolated myself afterwards my sensitivity levels changing like i'm going to try and touch on all the things that i've noticed about myself it's been just over a year now since it happened so i know that there's still so much more that happens on this journey and i still don't quite understand it if i'm going to be completely honest with you i still find it overwhelming sometimes especially with the change that's happened in my body when i touch on like nervous system changes and brain chemistry changes like it's definitely done something to me to change all of that so you know it's something that I feel my experience could support others through their experience, I'm hoping anyway, because I know it can feel like quite a lonely place. It's quite a nuanced thing that not many people understand. So when you're going through it, I think it's just getting that validation from other people's experiences just helps you not feel so alone through your process. And I'd hate for you to feel alone because I felt it, even though I've had people in my life that I can talk to about this, it's still something that your experience is very unique. So just hearing about other people's experiences just helps you anchor into, yes, okay, it's a knowing of that, that is really what happened. Now what do I do? Now what's the process? I don't get it. Like <laughs> that's, that's what I felt like after mine, I was kind of like, okay, so this whole thing has happened, then, then, then what? What now? Why did this happen to me what am I meant to do with this knowledge what am I meant to do with this energy and so I feel like this is why I mentioned about it being a disservice me not sharing because I've realized that my trials and tribulations that I've been through in life the things that I've experienced the things that I've learned from I've realized that this is a big part of my journey and my purpose is to share my experiences for other people to not feel so alone so that you gain some insight from it you gain whatever wisdom I've gained from it or whatever thing I've learned from it I can share that and hope that it helps other people move through their processes because I love to seek knowledge on experiences that I've been through or I'm trying to understand something or I'm intrigued by something so I kind of go on these little rabbit hole deep dives where I try and find out knowledge and things like that. I really hope that you are navigating this journey with grace, be kind to yourself, be calm, be gentle on yourself, take care of yourself, try not to overwhelm yourself with too much. If you notice that your sensitivity levels have shifted and changed with certain things, then it's probably best that you take action on that. Like maybe put that down, maybe don't do that for a while, maybe stay away from this. If this thing's affecting you too much, maybe just give yourself a bit of time away from it. But what I'm learning just now is that the Kundalini energy has obviously reshifted and realigned and reprogrammed my nervous system and it's seemingly showing me that I need to step away from certain things that are not serving me. I didn't touch on this in this episode, but the energy, when this has coursed through you, when I talk about the realignment and the shifts in your nervous system and your brain chemistry, what I've noticed for me, a year and a half in nearly, is that all of the things that are still lingering traumas, triggers in my body have been really put in my face. So whenever I feel like I'm like, yeah, go through life feeling great. Yeah, this is all good. You know, like nothing's nothing's bothering me. Bam, something else. Something else fucking hits me. And I'm just like, oh. But here again, it's made me ultra sensitive. So now I just have to face these things. And I have been going through many shifts and changes just trying to align myself to my true soul. 
basically and to be really really authentic in a sense of like share my truth speak my truth say my needs all of that kind of stuff all the things that used to scare me i now do so i now say i now speak up i now open myself up to sharing my truth and whoever receives it great and whoever doesn't i know what I know why I had to say it because they gotta be out my life, you know? So yeah, listen to your body, listen to what's really happening in there, listen to yourself, listen to your intuition, allow the energy to run through you and find that joy in your heart and lean into your heart. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate you being here. Stay tuned for the series because there is gonna be a series about this and I really, really wanna make sure that this is put out there and that people receive whatever they need to receive from it. Stay tuned for other fun episodes. Please leave a comment down below as well about your Kundalini experience. I'd love to get a conversation flowing in the comment section because I'd love to hear other people's experiences and I think it's just nice to have that community and that support through other people that have been through the same thing. Thank you so much for being here. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Much love.